Hey guys, welcome back to Deadman 1010 and welcome back to, well, not welcome back to anything and, uh, yeah, sorry that I couldn't pump out any videos over, I think, the last, maybe, day, I'm not so sure, but, uh, that's because I've not been feeling well very lately, but, thankfully I'm feeling, uh, Dragon Rolls pay-per-view takes place in 48... Okay, that was rude, but thankfully I'm feeling uh, not too bad, thankfully, right now, and therefore I can bring you this video of of my predictions for Extreme Rules 2021, and the last time that we did this was for SummerSlam, and uh, it was definitely interesting, for sure, but... Uh, now we're going to do it for Extreme Rolls. And in terms of my hype going into this, it was definitely nothing like Money in the Bank and SummerSlam were. But I, I still am pretty excited for it, considering of a couple matches that are on the card. But we will get into that right now, because we are going to be playing the video of Planner Productions or productions and his predictions for Extreme Rules 2021. And uh, I've actually never watched this video before, so this should be interesting. Or interesting. With that all means it. So let's get into this. Seeing as the video decides to play without my permission. Stupid thing. Eight hours and the match card for the event has a total of six matches i'm really happy that wwe decided to cut back on matches again because when the pandemic ended and the show started opening up again you had like nine ten matches and that was way too much wrestling shows are just so much more enjoyable and they're much better off when the card is condensed rather than having them jam-packed with as many matches as possible However, I'm not too excited about this show because it doesn't really feel like Extreme Rules. There's only one match on the card that has a stipulation, and that is the universe. That is true. Like, there should have been a lot more stipulations for this pay-per-view, I feel like. Because, come on, dude, it's Extreme Rules. Why do they never put stipulations in this pay-per-view anymore? It's like, it totally defeats the object. Don't it not? It's like, come on. It's like, it happened last year with it, where the only thing that was extreme about it was the eye for an eye match with Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins, and the Swamp Fight match with uh, Bray Wyatt, cult leader Bray, and Braun Strowman. That was legit the only extreme part of the show. And last year, they called it the horror show, which was the two reasons on why it was called the horror show but also it's the two reasons why it you know kind of i say kind of did get the name of extreme rules but to be fair it was always going to get that name whether or not those matches were there or not it just made it more deserving but i still think there should have been more i still think that there should have been more last year on the card when it comes to stipulations just like i believe about this year's so what i can totally say from this is it's a downward trend is what i'm saying and <laughs> it's not great but it's not terrible but it's something that could definitely be improved on on next year's extreme rules hopefully that is Universal Championship match between Finn Balor and Roman Reigns. I think it's very odd that the WWE decided to not take advantage of their stipulation show. Like the pay-per-view is literally called Extreme Rules. It could have given us I know, a right? match or an I quit match or something along those lines. I don't know. Anyways, that's why there hasn't been too much hype around this pay-per-view. However, I'm still going to give you my predictions for the show. So without further ado, let's get right into my predictions. The first That's kind of one of the reasons why the hell I wasn't so hyped for this pay-per-view as a whole. Because, well, there was no stipulations, and I mean, like, Money in the Bank and SummerSlam were just legendary. Like, SummerSlam 
SummerSlam wasn't perfect, but it still had a lot of hype around it, which is why I'm calling it legendary, like, the way I am. But that don't mean to say that it's perfect, by any means, because it wasn't. But it was still a great show. But, moving on to uh, this pay-per-view, with the first match, Sheamus, well, Damian Priest defending his US title against Sheamus and Jeff Hardy. have no idea how the hell Jeff Hardy got involved, and, uh, uh, in terms of what I think of, like, the feud and whatnot, uh, I mean, like, I'd imagine that it was a good feud, but then I've not really seen a whole lot of it. Feels a bit kind of random, but then that could just be me. You know, so it's kind of one of those things. But uh, in terms of who I believe could walk out of this thing, the victor, I feel like that has to be Damien Priest. Like, I would love for Jeff Hardy to hold a title again, but uh, I don't know. I think Damien Priest needs it more. Like, I know that we all want Jeff Hardy to be like the Jeff Hardy from all. I can't even speak words now. The Jeff Hardy of old from like 11 years ago, but it's just we we just need Priesty Boy to uh, be still doing well and holding a title. That's what we need. Put it that way. So yeah, I think Priest is winning it. Is what my prediction is for this match or match. First match on the card that we will talk about is the triple threat match for the United States Championship and Damian Priest will be defending his title against the former champion Sheamus as well as the new challenger Jeff Hardy and I love how the fans were just complaining about the fact that WWE was misusing Jeff Hardy and now the company instantly put him in a mid-card title match at a pay-per-view. It just shows that the WWE is trying to listen to some capacity and that is pretty cool. With that being said, though, it's... Yeah, I guess that explains why the hell he got in this match in the first place. Because of all the fan backlash of him being in the 24-7 title picture, which he did not need to be in. But then that might have been the only thing for him on that night. Or at least that's what C-Wrestling said. Which I do respect that, but it's not something that he should be doing. Which is why... Obviously, the back the backlash happened when it happened, which naturally led us to Jeff Hardy getting this U.S. title champ championship opportunity, and thank God he is getting it. Would that all means it? Also worth mentioning that Jeff Hardy is not winning the U.S. championship. As for Sheamus, I don't see him winning the belt either. He had a pretty lengthy title run beforehand and it came to an end and it is now time to allow Damian Priest to hold on to that title for a longer time period. And there's also rumors that Bad Bunny is coming back soon and it's totally possible that Priest will hold on to that title to feel like a bigger deal when the artist does return. For now though, Damian mm. Priest will be the US champion for a while, so you gotta get used to it. Ouch. The next match on the card that we have to discuss is Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair for this. It was speaking facts, I guys. You will have to get used to it, but yeah, ouch. <laughs> right in the heart. Well, not in my case, because I kind of like Damian Priest, to be fair. And I mean, like, he does have so much potential. And I'm glad that WWE is foreseeing this and allowing him to do his thing and, uh, Push him at the same time as him doing his thing. So, that's fun. Uh, I'm glad that's happening. But, anyways. We now have the second match. Which would be Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair. And, uh, the feud has been interesting, to say the least. And, uh, and it's definitely not been a bad feud. And, uh. Hopefully, they'll actually have a longer match than <laughs> SummerSlam. And, uh, 
as much as I would love for Bianca to kind of win back the title, because I feel like she needs it more, they're probably going to keep it on big time Bex, as uh, what's his face calls her. I can't remember his name. Why am I blanking out on it? It's annoying. Whatever. It'll come to me. It'll come to me, definitely. SmackDown Women's Championship. This is surprisingly the most exciting match that I'm looking forward to right after Finn Balor and Roman Reigns because the WWE have done a fantastic job at using both Becky and Bianca star power mm. to make this match have a big fight feel. I can confidently say that these two women feel like true superstars and I think they can definitely draw a crowd in my opinion. The buildup has been fun and this is a highly anticipated rematch. The SummerSlam bout was absolutely hated amongst many wrestling fans because people feel like WWE really buried and ruined Bianca Belair with their decision to have her lose the belt in just 26 seconds. I think the reason why this feels like a big fight is because it's going to be interesting whether Becky or Bianca wins and there's a lot of consequences. If Becky wins, we will continue to see the new cocky heel unfold and if Bianca wins, we will see her gain her confidence back and I would love to see another title reign with Bianca Belair and you also have the entire Sasha Banks factor. She could very well ruin this match. Oh that yeah, that's a good my point. Prediction. I think Sasha Banks will come interrupt the match I kind of forgot will end about in a Sasha. disqualification to set up a future that's a good point I forgot about Sasha because <laughs> obviously she couldn't compete at SummerSlam when she was supposed to against Bianca which naturally led to Becky's return in this whole feud going down although before then Carmella was trying to get in on it but yeah she was yeah she was never gonna get in on it <laughs> I don't really give a damn if she's supposed to be the most beautiful woman in WWE, like, come on. Yeah, <laughs> you need to put your big girl pants on, Carmella, and actually understand that, uh, yeah, <laughs> the fans were never going to want you in that match, and, uh, yeah, Becky was uh, literally uh, God saving the world at that stage. <laughs> In, until the match, and then things kind of went downhill from there. <laughs> but you guys already know the story, so I'm not going to say an awful lot on it. With that all means it. Triple threat match for that title. The Street Profits are going to have another title match with the Usos for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And I'm not going to lie, I would have been very excited about this match on the pay-per-view if we had not seen it on TV a few times in the last month. You really start to not care about a feud if you've seen it multiple times on SmackDown. They can put on a good show, but how many times do they put a sh on a good show and fans not get bored of seeing it? That's how I feel about this feud. Like, they'll put on a good show, there's no doubt about it, but... It's, it's just been happening for far too many weeks, and uh, there kind of needs to be a change. To be completely honest, and uh, I'm not sensing a lot of change. But the only change that I know won't happen is my prediction... And that is for the Usos to retain uh, the, Smack the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. That was actually a cool little segue that I did there. But uh, either way, yeah, they'll, they'll be retaining and hopefully they'll move on to other people. Hopefully. But I wouldn't go, I wouldn't, uh, go that far or be so sure. Because at the end of the day, it is WWE after all. They are notoriously known for their rematches. Which is not a good thing, but uh, I don't write the script. <laughs> I, just, I just watch the stuff. I just watch the show and all these other things. I mean, I would probably do better at it than most of the creator creative team put together. But then again... That would be being kind of biased, so I'm just going to let that one go. <laughs> but, hey, that's just my take. I mean, like, I'm a re reviewer, and obviously, you, you critique, and obviously, 
put things into perspective and you have your own take on things. Like, that is literally how it goes. Pretty, pretty simple. You know the rules and so do I. <laughs> oh, God. The, the puns of the century are, centuries are back, guys. Hope you didn't miss them. <laughs> or I hope you did. Either way, they're back. <laughs> so, you know, deal with it. <laughs> oh, God. I just spit on myself. Ah. But yeah, we're, I'm getting sidetracked here. Sidetracked here, but yeah. Point is, Usos are retaining. That's uh, that's the headline. Screw everything else <laughs> that I said in the last load of minutes that this has been paused. Anyway, let's continue because we've still got a few more matches to go through. Smackdown, you know what I mean. They've had many good matches, and I'm assuming it's going to be another good one. However, I've just seen it so many times that I don't really care about it. The Usos are going to probably retain in a good match, and that's all I can really say about this bout. After that, we have Alexa Bliss challenging Charlotte Flair for the Raw Women's Championship, and I've got to admit it, I'm kind of digging this feud. This is something I never expected to say because I was not a fan of this Alexa. The feud, in my mind, was actually quite good, but also kind of <laughs> what on earth is going on. But I did enjoy the Charlie doll kind of uh, a bit of this feud. I think that was quite funny. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm just excited to see Charlie get clobbered by Alexa Bliss. I think it'll be fun to honestly watch. And based on that, I think Alexa Bliss is going to win the, in the, I can't even speak words now, win the belt. Like, she don't need it, but I think she is going to win it. Because my prediction for the draft is going to be that Charlotte gets moved to SmackDown and the Hall of Famer Edge gets moved to Raw. That's like the big top predictions for the draft that is coming up soon. And based on that, that would uh, need, based on that, I can't even speak words now. Charlotte would have to lose the Raw Women's title, and it may as well be to Alexa Bliss. Because, I mean, like, it makes logical sense, don't it not? But, uh, either way, that's who I think will win, and I think it will be fun to see her win and, well, <laughs> kind of uh, <laughs> torture Charlotte a bit, but uh, they, they probably won't go that far. I mean, like, they treat her like a kid character anyway. Like, four kids, that is. Like, they treat her as a character for kids anyway, so... They probably won't go that far, unfortunately. And also, given the fact that it's a PG show, but... Uh, they do we are uh, something. They can definitely come up with things, and obviously... With that comes crazy moments like that. So, uh, based on that... You might be surprised, but I won't hold your breath. <laughs> so based on that, I think that Alexa Bliss is going to win the Raw, the Raw Women's title. Based on that. Alexa Bliss gimmick, but I do think that she's gotten a lot better since WWE is doing a lot less supernatural spots. That is when she's at her best. I can get behind a creepy Alexa Bliss who does not have superpowers. Anyways, it's been a pretty decent feud and the storyline with these two is good. I don't expect this to end anytime soon and it's not definitely ending at Extreme Rules, but Alexa Bliss isn't going to win the belt either. Charlotte will retain the Raw Women's Championship and probably continue this rivalry in the future. I see Alexa Bliss eventually getting the belt in a few months, and if that doesn't happen, she's definitely going to win the Royal Rumble and then win at WrestleMania 38. That is my prediction. I am locking that it in That would be now. cool. That would be cool, actually. Liv Morgan versus Carmella is the most random match that was announced for this pay-per-view because it kind of just happened. I suppose that I don't know why the hell this match is happening because there there was literally no build up for it whatsoever. Like there was kind of, but not to the level of some of the other matches, which is why it makes zero sense. But they'll probably have a fairly decent match and uh personally I think Liv Morgan should win. Cause I don't want Carmella to win. 
I don't even want her on my friggin' screen. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, honestly, that picture, honestly, she looks a lot like Harley Quinn. Which is ironic because the opponent who she's facing, Liv Morgan, naturally has uh, cosplayed as Harley Quinn before in a match. So, a bit ironic when you think about it. <laughs> but, uh, either way, we're going to move on. I think Liv's going to win. That's my prediction. And, uh, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. But the WWE is finally going to attempt to make Liv Morgan a star. And putting her on a WWE mm. pay-per-view in a singles match is a good way to start. I see Liv Morgan easily winning this match to gain some momentum, and that's about it. I mean, that's the only benefit of the and match the that we're going to get. the show is going to be Roman Reigns defending the Universal Championship. Oh, sugar Christ. I wasn't meant to do that. Damn it. Open an account and get at least 10% off for life. It's that easy. With the rewards program from Booking.com. WWE's annual... God, if only you could do do-overs. Well, I could, but I don't, want, I don't want to. God, I hope there's a way to edit this out. Jesus Christ, on a bike. Right, there we go. I'm easily winning this match to gain some momentum, and that's about it. Yeah, that's the only benefit this match is going to give to Liv Morgan or any of the fans whatsoever. Because of how random the match is, but anyway... Moving on to the match that I am most excited for, personally, and that would be the main event. And the only match that actually has a stipulation on it, by the way, guys. Or at least it was pretty evident of it over last, well, over last night, actually, at the time of filming this, when uh, Finn went to war on the, on uh, the, the bloodline and... Uh, naturally beat them all up which was a good way to showcase the demon king in action which it had been a good while since then like before this feud was ever thought of so yeah fun stuff indeed and the main event of the show is going to be Roman Reigns defending the Universal Championship against the Demon Finn Balor. And I know we've seen these two have many matches in the past together, maybe a total of three or four. But things are different now that the Demon is back. I have no doubt that this is going to be the match of the night. It's going to be really interesting to see how WWE tries to book this match. Because if you know, the mm. Demon never lost on the main roster. And I also don't see Finn Balor winning this match. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does. But I think that this might be the first loss that he suffers on the main roster. Because Roman Reigns simply cannot lose. <coughs> maybe the Usos will get involved oh, to make it gosh. seem like he got screwed over. Or maybe someone else yeah. will screw him over. Who knows? Brock Lesnar could also come and just, you know shit up if he wants you'll never know we'll see what happens but roman reigns is walking out of extreme rules as the champion anyways yeah roman's walking out <coughs> sorry about the cough there guys but yeah Roman's walking out the Universal Champion, like, Demon King is going to get his first loss, but they're going to have a hell of a match. Like, there's no damn doubt about it. I am looking forward to seeing how this match and these guys play out inside the ring. It, it's going to be good stuff, I can assure you, and it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun indeed. But, uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this episode, video on my predictions for extreme rules 2021 then like comment subscribe share these videos if could get out 60 if could get out to 60 likes that'll be great and yeah ciao guys